Good evening. I'm Helga Janssen Daubian. Welcome to Democracy in Action, the show where we talk issues affecting you and your community. South Africa has welcomed the swearing in of its sixth national parliament. A new president, a free and fair 2019 election means we have all been active citizens exercising our democratic right, building our South African democracy. But is this single act every five years the only way we can express being active citizens? With our right to vote and our rights enshrined in the Bill of Rights, do we not have responsibilities that stretch far beyond a single act every five years? In this episode of Democracy in Action, we ask, what is an active citizen in modern South Africa? And how can we do better in exercising our responsibility? Before we go into our discussion, we went around Cape Town and asked people, what is an active citizen? Let's have a look. The elections was one way of seeing that South Africans are active citizens when they went to the polls to go and vote, although that's not enough. Now, to be an active citizen does not mean you have to have a specific governing role. Active citizenship means people getting involved in their local communities and democracy at all levels, from towns to cities to nationwide activity. Let's hear from the people of Cape Town if they understand what is an active citizen. An active citizen is, is, is just people in general, right, participating in the life and the character of the country or their nation. That's what this thing boils down to, right? That's what active citizens mean, right? Uh, and then, of course, I would also say that, um, you know, people, of course, are, are constrained by all kinds of activities in terms of being active citizens. Of course, we always hope that, that people would participate in various organizations, at least in that way. They are very close in being active citizens, right? So, as I'm saying, active citizens mean, you know, the general pop population being active in the character and the life of the country. Uh, active citizen, it depends on uh, how you think and how you feel, how you want to make your community better in a way that you understand, that makes you feel happy and the people around you. A person who cares about others, who doesn't just care for himself or herself. Yeah. An active citizen is the person that when you see crime happening, then you report it or you act upon it. And no, I do not consider myself as an active citizen because those, those are the ones that is actually uh, complain about stuff, or crimes and stuff, is the ones that feel the most strains in the society. There are many, look for example, there are many children who are wanting to participate in various things. But the problem is that we're not, we're not bringing these organizations closer to them, you know, so that then they, they'll be able to participate. So that is why, especially in our communities and disadvantaged communities, we have so many children who are not participating in things. Look, children are supposed to be participating in, in things like um, walking on Cape Mountain, for example. It's a start of kids being conscious about their own environment. But of course, I'm, and I'm saying, we're not bringing those things much more closer and for them to understand uh, the importance of, of these various organizations that we have in our society. I would, I would love to be an active citizen. I would love to be an active citizen in a fair country, you see. Well, at this moment, we were not fair, the country is not fair, and where we live in, crime happens in front of us without us knowing about it. So who speaks about it? Welcome back. You're watching Democracy in Action and tonight we're talking active citizenship. With me in studio to discuss this matter is Z Zuki Vuka. Let me get that right. <laughs> is Zuki Vuka from multi-organization Unite Behind. Welcome and thank you. Thank you so much, Alva. We're also joined by Wayne Turner, a media maker and community leader from Musenberg. Thank you for joining us, Wayne. It's great being on the show. Zuki, let's start with you. We heard in our insert but South Africans have very firm opinions about what it means to be an active citizen. Give us a definition. What does it mean to be an active citizen? Um, being an active citizen basically means that 
um, you are a person that um, <clears throat> takes responsibility and does initiatives to for for the good of the of the of the pu public. Mm -hmm. You know, you're able to hold the government to account and able to question where where, where it's necessary. Mm -hmm. So that, that's being a, a good citizen for me. When I'm saying active um, responsibility, that includes like voting and actually going to a council, reporting things that you're unhappy about. Um, so that's basically how I would define ex active citizenship. When, so Zuki spoke about the act of voting as part of probably the, one of the biggest expressions of being an active citizen, but is that enough? We do it once every five years, is it enough? No. <laughs> and I think we, we pretty much agree on, on the, uh, the term active. Active means doing something, no matter how small it is, I mean, you might be a top activist, very much lobbying government, but you can also be that lady who is from your community and you hate the sewage running down your mm -hmm. street or you've got this problem or another problem. The, the active word is active. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you need to be active. It doesn't matter what level, because you, that's where you start mm -hmm. and you can always grow. And another thing she said was personal. You, you need to take personal responsibility sitting back and just moaning about it and doing nothing. Mm. And I mean, like I just mentioned, you don't have to be a major activist. Mm. Mm. You just need to be taking some action, some basic, mm. basic, basic action in your community. So Zuki, Unite Behind um, is very active through its multi-organizations that belong to the organization. In your experience, is there a level of personal and individual responsibility that people take in communities? I mean, we know we see mm. lots of community actions, but where does that start? Um, for I'm just going to make an example of one affiliate organization that um, is under the banner of You're Not Behind. Um, equal Education, um, they, f they started in 2008. Fortunately, I was one of the core members when they were starting to pilot, starting to see whether we can be able to have an organization such as mm. Equal Education. So what we did there is that in, in schools, you know, the education system mm. in South Africa is not as equal as we would want it to be. So there's, there was, still is, but back then in my school where, where I used to go to, it, we had problems with um, broken windows, we had problems with um, textbooks, we had um, problems with, you know, school which didn't have fencing. Mm. So it started with um, learners themselves inside the school, starting to organize ourselves mm -hmm. and actually taking a list of demands or our concerns mm -hmm. to the principal mm -hmm. and saying these are things that we're not happy about. But at that time, fortunately, our principal was way aware of what was going on in school and he was speaking to the government to say these are the reasons why we've got people from the community coming in to vandalize or even to, to rob or take mm -hmm. items, you know, computers and, and everything that, that would be in a school. So for us to be able to prevent that from happening, mm. we actually need a fencing. Mm. We need bambanani, you know. So those are the things that we were able to personally speak amongst, us, them, um, amongst ourselves to say, we are not happy about mm. this. So therefore, where is the solution as the head of the school? So I think we, we've, we, we have um, done, you know, uh, pretty, pretty much most of the things that one would mm. do personally mm. in order for them to be or to be recognized as, a, as an active citizen. When Z Zuki frames um, an action um, in a, a really post-94 setting, but as a media maker and, 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 and as a collector of stories, you also give, give us a sense of where this legacy, because it is an historical legacy of taking up issues as an active citizen. It's not something that just the National mm. Development Plan talks about. Yeah, I mean, you see a very much a divided situation with, with your races because uh, a lot of white people just mm. don't realize how privileged they are. Mm. And they live within an insulated community. It might be a multiracial community, mm. but it's middle class. Mm. And you don't, you don't see the, uh, the real hard uh, problems that people have. Mm. And it is an insulation. And once you start getting beyond that and seeing that the people so often people just look at the news and they say, oh, these people, what, what are they doing? Why are they doing it? But they're looking at it from, from that. And so part of our uh, side is that uh, people like to use the term 25 years into democracy. Mm. This should have been changed and that should have been changed. Man, it, 
Okay, that is just not a, not a feature because you've got to realize things take time. Mm -hmm. And the big thing in a lot of communities is education. Why you shouldn't do this, why you shouldn't do that, why you are privileged and why you can make a change. I think that's where a lot of us, I mean, I come from a very middle class situation. The side of, well, uh, we have problems with crime. I'm an ex-SAPS and I got involved with the auxiliary side of, of City of Cape Town law enforcement. Mm. In actual fact, to say, I'm one person, I can do something, I must get involved. Mm. And I think that's what uh, Zuki is saying as well. It doesn't matter what your issue is, mm. where you find yourself in whatever strata of society, mm. you need to start saying, I need to take personal responsibility. I can't sit on the fence and criticize. And many communities are like that, especially middle class. Mm. They like to criticize, go to social media and moan about their situation mm. without realizing that they are pretty privileged and what they've got is great. I think people need to be educated to say, let's look at our community as a whole, mm. not by suburb and greater community. You find suburbs have got different, uh, different stratas of mm. economics. Yeah. Once you start realizing that and start educating people, yeah. you actually silence the critics and you start getting people say, well, I didn't know that, let me get involved. And uh, I mean, Zuki is looking at, the, at a much bigger mm. issue. Mm. What I'm saying is start, start small, because mm. that all of a sudden you've got a person who started small and they start developing, doing stuff, then, well, maybe I could be a city councillor, maybe mm. I can take this further. And then you start getting into that realm. But you can't sort of just come up at this level mm. of mm. activism, mm. say, well, I want to do that, because that's the high profile, that's the nice mm. part. You need to serve down in the trenches. Mm. So, okay, I see you agreeing with, with, with I, Wayne. I wanted to inter mm. interject there, but yeah. I didn't want to disturb you because <laughs> you're, you're on the floor. Um, so, I, I fully agree with, with what you're saying. And um, I think, again, it, it, it speaks to, to, to what you've, you've just mentioned now about social media having an impact and, and also people venting and, and complaining on Facebook or WhatsApp saying, <laughs> I'm not happy about this. Now the question which is very important, it's what you touched on as well, is that what are you doing about it? Because um, moaning and saying I'm not happy about this, it's not, it's not really enough mm. up until you take steps to fixing it or even you, you try speaking to different people which might be able to assist. Um, another thing that I think is very important is, you know, when we speaking about young people as opposed to like your your older generation then it's me there's <laughs> <laughs> a difference you're speaking that. to me now okay i'll listen i i find um i find your generation a bit like complacent oh Some totally of <laughs> i find them the complacent on their head. <laughs> because they used to saying things have always been like this it's fine I, there's nothing that i can i can't i can't do about what is happening, which I believe is not true. Mm. But now, then again, on the other side, there's young people. We've got our entire lives ahead of us. So I don't understand when you don't want to partake. If you're not happy about something, why aren't you voicing yourself out? Why aren't you saying, I'm not happy about this? Mm. Because the, the, the more we speak to one another as the older generation and as, and as a young person, is the more I get to understand that things that are happening now if it's things that you've been, you, you've, you've, you've gone through, that, which that is that the reason we, why that, that you would be complacent. responsible for. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of okay. things. Yeah, so I, 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 like <laughs> yeah, I like ahead. what you're saying there because so op often what happens in, especially like you said, the older generation, you vote your people in mm. and you leave it. And that's one of the things we found in our community with people. They say, don't vote someone in. Now you have a responsibility to see that those people do what mm. they mm. promise to do. And that's where I think active citizen comes in on the higher level. Yeah. Hold those people accountable. Go to your city council and say, we, we voted you in. Mm. And you said all these policies, but you're not doing that. You're not doing that. And hold them accountable. Mm. And I think that's where the, the younger generation need to get involved because you're more active. Mm. Where, I mean, I, as my generation, I'm one of the active ones. There are lots of people who just, True. they sit back and say, well, the people we voted in must sort it out. Then they'll keep on complaining mm. and going to social media and creating situations that mm. should never be there. But Zuki, I want to actually just take a point that Wayne makes, which is about the, 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 the tradition and the, the culture of utilizing the institutional mechanisms through the city council. Is this part of um, the organizations that you work with? Is this part of their strategies? Um, very much so. Mm. Um, you know, when it comes to 
people in general, I'm not going to say um, young people or, or, or older mm. generation, people in general, we know for a fact that we've got channels when we, when we want to complain or when, when we want to vo voice our concerns. Mm. I know for, for a fact that Facebook is not one of them. You can vent all you want, <laughs> but then it's not going to change. It's not making a difference. So we've got proper channels, but now it goes back to education. You mentioned that mm. people need to understand, people need to read, people need to know mm. what channels or what is it that they need mm. or what can they do in order for to better situations. Mm. So it, 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 it speaks to, as a person, there's institutions, as mm. you mentioned, mm. there's people that you can speak to in order for you to be able to make change. Mm. But what happens when that person doesn't want to listen to you or that person is not um, delivering? What happens then? Comes back to what he was saying about um, people starting to ban things because they're not happy about service delivery. But then there's other ways of, you know, um, showing your frustrations, mm. other ways of being angry, mm. other than you uh, banning what you already have you know, mm. so but you've got to you've got to make your your representatives listen. Yeah, mm. uh, you mentioned social media, Facebook. We use Facebook effectively when the local government responds to what we're saying. We put a picture, video of sewage pouring out in the mm. place, so you can use it effectively. But if you use it as keyboard warriors, people just say oh, it's just another social media thing. Mm. Uh, we're just going to ignore it. But we need to be active in our use of social mm. media as well from the correct way of doing it and not just venting and person, you know when you attack someone personally, mm. they sit back and say, well, I know I'm right, mm. you've been unfair, I'm just not gonna respond. And then they do nothing. You want people when you, when you take action to listen to you and say, okay, we're going to do this. Mm. Mm. And again, it is holding people accountable. Mm. Firstly, holding yourself accountable and saying, I'm going to do something. And secondly, the people you've elected, the people who work in your community, whether it be city council or political party, whoever it is, say to them, we're not so far and no further. You will do what we want because mm. we elected you. Mm. And I think. Wayne, I want to just come back to this issue of keyboard warriors because we've had that conversation both before we started filming and now again. I know you've got a very strong stance on keyboard warriors. Do you think people confuse the keyboard with being an active citizen? You know, a keyboard warrior, I can give a bit of a de definition, mm. is a person who rents and does something and doesn't support it with any action. Mm. Mm. And again, it brings the whole active thing in it. When I, when I do uh, or make posts or respond to something, I say, look, we've put in 100 hours in that area of volunteer law enforcement at no cost. We've done something about that. And you almost, you get a right to make posts. Uh, they're not critical. They're mm. constructive in their criticism. Mm. I think you'll agree as well. When, mm. you, when, you, when you're critical of something, you must be constructive mm. and say, this is our problem. Mm. This is what we would like resolved. Mm. Let's do something about it. And as soon as you challenge keyboard warriors with, with the truth, with education, what's actually happening, they all keep quiet. Mm. So I think we, we need to engage in that realm to yeah. make sure that uh, it stops them in their tracks with positive education, all the other mm. aspects of it to make mm. them stop doing it. But um, Zuki, we spoke about the generational differences in the way that people express um, mm. their active citizenship. The younger generation, of course, is a lot more adept at utilizing social media. Mm. But do you think that there are dangers involved in perhaps spreading fake information, etc.? Um, certainly. There's, there's, as young people, with the, an advantage of this new technology that um, all this generation mm. never had, so the advantage is that we able to use, you know, your Facebook, your WhatsApp, and all the other social media. But now the problem comes when we starting to like spread things that are not real mm. because we want to maybe someone wants to achieve whatever that they want mm. to achieve. So it becomes very problematic and and a danger because some people they, they they trust facebook if something is on facebook it's exactly. it's the bible it's exactly. the truth exactly. so they they don't want to see anything beyond that mm. so that can be very dangerous for a young person with that mindset that facebook is the way to go yeah. when as a person that knows exactly that what you have posted there is incorrect and is not true mm. then someone else gets a hold of that and then they're starting 
to act in a way that Facebook tells them to act because that's how our new generation is. Yeah. As yeah. sad as it is, but that's yeah. that's yeah, I think I think what you need to do with any media. I mean, I've been in radio twenty plus years now, and as a journalist, you need to number one verify your source, and you can't do that on Facebook. <laughs> so I don't believe anything on Facebook. <laughs> Let me give you an example. This morning I'm on uh, Facebook, and there's a picture of these young people on their phones, and this old lady holding onto a, a, a pole in the on the train, and the post is, "Look how the younger generation." Are treating older people now i immediately don't believe that so we did some research and what it is it took place in sydney australia the old lady had got up from her chair was holding on there before she got off and the her grandson actually phoned into the radio station and said that was fake news so we need to have a new mm -hmm. understanding of dealing with social media we need to verify it don't post don't mm -hmm. add to it until you've done some research go to uh snopes just use the word hoax i just typed in hoax picture old lady in train with mm. and up it came the picture was there and they explained it mm. so you, you need to again educate yourself take mm. active responsibility mm. what you're going to repost and how you're going to do it because mm. i think the youth have definitely got a big advantage mm. uh, when it comes to social media mm. and being able to engage and if they do it properly it brings power so zuki before we go to break just give us some examples because like like wayne is saying um, the, 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 the tools are very powerful. You're saying that it can also be dangerous. Can you give us some examples of how the strategies that you've had to use in your organization to almost curb that, 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 that kind of danger? Because fake news is real. Mm. So what we've done um, at Unite Behind is that, as you say, we try as much as we can to verify uh, things that we see on Facebook or we've got or we would have like a link that tells you exactly maybe we've got a statement decided to have a statement on our facebook page then there would be a link if we for an example if we're speaking about prasa leaks mm. um a document that went out um at the end of 2017 about the state of prasa and how prasa was captured so if you've got that we're not only speaking about that that you know we've got problems mm. in chain but there's a link that is going to, going to take mm. you to the original source mm. which would which would be ground up article mm. which has the name of the person that mm. wrote that article so that whenever you are sure about anything you're able to go back and call mm. you know ground up and say i've got an article here which says this and this so i just wanted to mm. make sure that i've got it right you know? if that person's reputable mm. which uh, if you can get it from a reputable journalist mm. or someone mm. it, it it helps with the verification mm. so that you don't you're not repeating because you it can be embarrassing true so many of us mm. have learned the hard way especially with our journalism backgrounds and you, know, you often result an egg on your face if you're not careful so you've got to be yeah. very careful absolutely so th before we go to the break i just want wayne in particular because zuki you spoke about prasa which is a big campaign um, when we come back, Wayne, I'd like, maybe like for you to give us an example and to maybe talk about the more localized um, initiatives which build um, uh, active citizenship. Yeah? Mm -hmm. When we come back, we'll talk more active citizenship. part we asked what are some tools and strategies government and organization can use to build active citizenship television for example television as well can play a role in conscientizing people about various interests in conscientizing them about organizations that are that are you know that are in our society as well so that then people can be able to pick up uh, their own interest and in that way you are simply broadening people in terms of participation right I mean that's the, look TV is sitting much more better because then as well you need to understand as well how as a nation for example we are not generally a reading nation but of course all of us are watching TV so it is a role of TV right um, because millions of people are watching TV to really encourage people to make them understand what organizations are and what organizations are out there. Just uh, like advertise like 
yeah, see so that we can see what exactly they do so that we can we can be able to get involved like we can just get involved in something that we don't understand see it just depends as well in terms of the the objectives which are pursued by various organizations i mean look for example i mean if we have organizations for for cats and trees well, we can't be asking that question from them right because i mean their interest really involves around cats and and dogs and trees right but of course in, in our country we have various political organizations uh, and other organizations as well, you know, regarding the question of houses and what have you. I mean, of course, the only way that we can encourage them, possibly, in terms of just getting the organization, uh, you know, people active, is we hope that they, they, are, they are more active in bringing their objectives directly to the communities. Right? But the other thing is that, in as much as we have so many organizations, I don't think we're doing enough work to conscientize people, you know, uh, about various issues in them participating. Because there are a lot of things that are happening, but ordinary people are not, are not really actively involved. They should often visit the communities just to show that they do care. They mustn't stay and just be invisible. They say they're going to come or so. They must, like, do, like, just to keep our hearts and hopes high. That is to show. Welcome back. We're talking active citizenship. Wayne, before the break, um, we, we, um, Zuki was uh, giving us an example of a big campaign around Prasa and how they've been trying to build the campaign, but at the local level. How does one get involved? And maybe you can give us an example mm. from Musenberg. Yeah. Uh, in Musenberg, we have a number of organizations, your, your uh, residence associations, your Musenberg Improvement District, you've got the Neighborhood Watches, a variety of uh, safer together community organizations and when you get together and when you all speak in the same language when there's an issue one of the things is often is litter from the trains and it builds up in the praza section between the fence and the, and the railway line and it looks bad mm. and people get quite offended by having all this rubbish lying all over the place and by engaging praza at the local level through the organizations you Firstly, you need to know who the person, the correct person to speak to. Because mm -hmm. you know you can be pushed around and if you can, I think it would be in all mm -hmm. aspects of activism. Get, find, do your research. Don't start shouting and moaning and speaking your mind mm -hmm. until you know who the right person is. Mm -hmm. Because often you can get it sorted out there and then. There's no social media outcries and mm -hmm. you can get the job done and move on to the next thing. Otherwise, you just take up valuable mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. and do all these things. And then just engage and say, look, we're unhappy with that. Mm. If you've got a problem, we've got community members who will put on, on uh, bibs and take bags and come and assist your staff and just clear it up. Mm. You just need to make sure there's people mm. monitoring. And by engaging them in a positive way, they will listen. No one likes to be uh, called names and criticized mm. when really they're doing their job because they like their job and they mm. want to make, make a difference. They're the environmental person from mm. Praza. So engage the right people and uh, from a community level, and, and they'll listen. So Zuki, that's at the local level, some great advice there about knowing who to talk to. But give us an example, and on a bigger scale, how would you extrapolate that strategy if we're talking anti-state capture, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, um, and you're wanting people to get involved as active citizens in a big campaign? I get the easy campaign. questions, you get the difficult <laughs> <laughs> So um, before we even started with the hashtag fix our train, our trains campaign, which was um, in 2017, September, we were trying to understand like why is a, a problem when it comes to transport? You know, a lot of people um, get to work late, they get fired, they get warnings. You know, you know, you know this. Mm. And the, the the main problem was was the trains, um, trains being or they're supposed to be the backbone of South Africa. Uh, and they're supposed to be efficient because there, there's nothing else that we, you would find on the, on the railway line besides the train. Mm. Um, they're supposed to be you know, affordable, efficient, all the nice things. And they're supposed to be the, the one transport mode that carries a lot of people mm. when you're comparing them to, 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 to you know, your bus and, and other transport modes. 
but that, that is a problem because we found out that it's, it's a broken system. A commuter rail is, is in crisis. Mm. It's, it's close to non-existent because people are struggling while we've got trains. And what we started to do is to try to find out, as Wayne was saying, try to find out where the problems are. What is it that we can do as a civil society or as um, different organizations that form Unite Behind? What is it that we can do to assist? Um, understanding that people that are working at Prasa, as Wayne has said, they love their jobs. Some of them they do, and some of them they're not happy because of internal issues. But then on the other side, they still have to deliver because they're working for the public. They're serving the citizens. So they have to do what they're supposed to do. But now we went as far as trying to find out whether, because you know, even at your house, if there's problems between parents, everything else that is beneath that, it, 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 it has, a, it, it's, it's possible that it might not work out. Mm. You might have problems with, you know, your kids getting in trouble because you guys are not. So it's just exactly what happened mm. at Prasa. Prasa does not have a board even today. So obviously, if they don't have a board, they've got an interim board. Everything that is being, every decision that is being made, it's made in an, it, in an, in an interim because people know that I'm just here, I'm going to leave. So whatever, even if I come here, loot, take money, I'm not going to be held accountable because by the time they realize, I'm not going to be here. So the problem was that challenging the Legal Successions Act to say this is an act that governs how Prasa's board is supposed to be. That's a problem on that mm -hmm. act on its own because that act is not saying that um, there should be an interim board. Mm -hmm. It just speaks to a board. So why is it that the minister, when they appointing people in that board, why are they choosing an interim board? And that interim board does not have a duration. It's an interim board that can take forever if they want to. So the problems were starting right at the top. Mm. So as you're not behind, we took that matter to court mm. to say, if you are not willing to come to the table and tell us when is this going to be a board, not an interim board, so that we need to go so to court. So of course the next question would be, Zuki, sorry to um, interrupt you, but the next question of course would be, so you took it to court. Mm -hmm. How did you get members of, the, of your member organizations involved as active citizens because the, as you rightfully said mm. a train service is the backbone of our economy so how did you get act, um, citizens ordinary people involved in in that part of the campaign um it was i must say it was not easy mm. because as you said before when you're speaking about state capture and you're trying to um, explain what state capture is to an ordinary mama mm. that is selling um sheep cops or whatever mm. right in the at the station or mm in the streets, it's, it's not easy. So it becomes this um, abstract notion. But in, in, in reality, it's, it's not that far mm. from what you're living, from the realities of mm. your life. Because for the past four or five months, there's been more than a thousand people at Prasa dying. So you'd ask yourself, why is it that trains are overcrowded? Why is it that trains are constantly colluding? Like they, they, they just, get into, into, into accident. What's happening with the signaling? Mm -hmm. Is Prasa not aware that we've got problems? Why is it that we don't have security guards? If you go to the station, mm -hmm. security guards, they don't know what they're supposed to do. You're telling them, I need a train. They don't know when the train is going to come. So all those problems are all linked to state capture and the fact that Prasa has had companies which were meant to provide us with those um, services. They meant to provide signaling. They meant to uh, build us trains. Instead of doing that, they gave us trains which were taller than the train tracks. You know, all those things. You're trying to take what people can see, people, what people can relate to, and you're trying to mm -hmm. tell them that it's because of state capture. But so you know the problem, sorry, the, the problem is, is that people see these major issues. You use the word state capture and people think, oh, I don't even know what that is. Mm -hmm. and, but the problems up there, they think, it's so big, what must I do? And it filters down and people don't do anything. Mm -hmm. They don't realize that starting from ground up is going to uh, have an impact. You've got people who are fighting there and are doing that. Trust them, hold them accountable if you can, but don't say, well, it's just too big, there's nothing I can mm -hmm. do. There is always something mm -hmm. you can do. And if, if you start at grassroots level and start uh, making some form of impact, whether it just be, like I said, Praza, 
at a, at a lower level or when the community groups go mm. to prize and I say we on the ground we're sick and tired of it we've got people fighting for us but now we are tired mm. let's do something about it and start in finding who you can engage with but don't let it discourage you to the point you say well I'm just not going to be do anything you become mm. uh, com I think your word was complacent mm. lethargic mm. I'm not going to do anything I can't do anything and you just sit back be engaged because being engaged and doing something being active it might be an environment but you it opens yourself to possibilities. All of a sudden you transfer from in that and say, well, hey, I'm an ex-police officer, maybe I can now do something there. And you start getting motivated because you see the success of mm. being involved yeah, in the environment. Exactly. And these things impact and they have knock-on effects. So the bottom line is just find something. So, uh, okay, just go ahead. In, in, what, in what you say, Wayne, what the, another initiative that we started is um, action committees. Because of the number of people that are being robbed on the way from um, their houses to the train stations. Mm. So this happens in the early hours of the morning. And the uh, um, police stations are quite far from, from the stations themselves. So what we've done is we've, we've kind of like created these uh, this groups of people. We've got an action committee in Kailicha. We've got one in Alsace River and we've got one in Woodstock. So the volunteers, what their purpose is, is to walk people from where they can see, because you can see when you're about to approach the station, there's normally like this footpath mm. where people are starting to get inside the vicinity of the station. So we would have people from there, right inside the train station, uh, doing pamphlet, pamphlet distribution and encouraging people to walk in numbers because the station managers are often not there. People don't know, there's no reporting mechanism. People don't know who to speak to when something happens. You go to the police station, they say, no, it's not us. You need to speak to Prasa. So, you know, so, so that's, that's a very good example, I think, of being active. Mm. Because there's obviously a gap in safety and security as people make their way home. Mm. But so, so could I give an example? Yeah, sure. Um, in Cork Bay, there's a, a relatively new coffee shop since before Christmas. And... Uh, I'm out on patrol with a couple of safety wardens and we engage our community and sometimes the guys stop there for a cup of coffee and uh, they all speak to us and a number of their staff members had been robbed in a taxi or on the way to a station or even just walking in Cork Bay at 6.30 mm. in the morning. Do you know what the owners did? They said, well, we're not going to open at 7 any morning. every morning, we're going to open at 8. And immediately that extra time that the staff members have puts them into a different time bracket mm. where the where they don't get robbed or, or attacked. Mm. So that, that's private business of now, I mean, look, it, it, they do take a knock, it's an out, out of business, but I thought it was such a good initiative. Mm. They've got about a total of 40 staff. I spoke to one of the guys there a few days ago and said, we haven't had any incidents. But that to me is, a, that is an example of, of management owners being active mm. citizens saying, my staff are impacted like that, let's make a yes. change. It might yeah. cost me, but let's make, make a, a positive change. change and people aren't getting robbed anymore. I mean, for me, that's such a great example. That's a very good example. But I want to just change or, 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 or direct us now to, we spoke about rights, and we know that our rights as citizens are enshrined in the Bill of Rights, but we also have responsibility towards those rights. Exactly. We can't just, um, we can get involved in campaigns and say this is not right and that is not right, but we also have responsibility. Just talk to us, Wayne, about this issue of um, rights and responsibility. Right. Um, one of the things when you train as a peace officer, uh, law enforcement, traffic, all the guys in the city of Cape Town, uh, which for my generation was a, a big gap, and that's about the Constitution mm. and people's rights. But very interesting you say that because the little uh, grouping that I, I partner with with the podcast with mm. we look at the whole aspect of rights and, res and responsibilities I have a right to vote but I have a responsibility to hold those people I voted for accountable mm. and so often we we exercise rights but then we forget our responsibilities and the responsibilities of people uh, in power or in organizations to actually do mm. what they're supposed to do. So I think those are integrally, integrally linked, that right that you have, and you must also hold uh, the, the people responsible mm. for what they're doing, and you be responsible to see that happen. I think that's very much with what yeah. you've been saying as well. Uh, you know, I, I, I found it, um, it, I don't know, 
I was I was so amazed and when you know just before the the, the 8th of May before we went to, to to vote how all these political parties were on the drive to say people you need to vote for us um, we be promising you this we're gonna do this with the same spirit with the same hype if the same political parties would go within the, the, the five years, would go into communities and say, look, this is how the constitution works. This is how you hold me accountable. You know, do a drive to teach them. Because people out there, they, they, we can't run away from this. A lot of them are illiterate. They have mm. never been to school. Mm. So to try to find a way to educate us, the people that are supposed to be holding you accountable, tell me what to do. Because it's, it's not easy. I think People are living a very difficult yeah. life out there. That's a, that's a role that some of us that are involved in active citizenry. Mm. Uh, and we, we're going to a website with uh, details of how you can contact people. Who's the local uh, councillor that you need to go and see? Mm. And say, you made these promises. Yes, 50 of my friends, we come into your office. We're not going to do anything. We're going to come in and you're going to speak to us and tell us, you said X, Y, Z. Mm. Why are you delivering A, B, C? The, the, the politicians and the leaders get into a habit of the norm. They get back to the norm. We always did it like this. But when you've got people saying, hold on, you said this, we must vote, we mustn't vote for this, and we mustn't do it now, mm. what are you doing about it? And like I said, in that five years, being active citizens is holding those people responsible and accountable. Don't wait until the next election comes and they exactly. start handing out food parcels or caps and t-shirts and saying, and all of the parties do that, mm. not specifically mm. looking at one party. But they do all of that, but why aren't they doing it in that five-year in that five year period? And I think we are wrong. That's where we've slipped up. We need to say to these guys, you're going to do this for us because we voted for you. Mm. And I think the organizations that, that uh, have that, uh, that fire need to start making sure that that happens and educate, like you say, the people who are on the ground. Yeah. I'm going to be a little bit controversial now. I'm going to ask you for your opinion. Um, the last 10 years um, of our society have been very, very traumatic. Um, the last year, we've seen the skeletons, the small and young, as literally falling out of the cupboard. Mm. Um, do you think, Zuki, um, and I'm going to ask Wayne as well, that there are any lessons that as a society, not as parliament, not as our new president, but as, as a society, we need to take from these 10 years? Um, definitely, mm. definitely. Um, we have seen the amount of money and the looting that's been happening mm. in the state that, that affects directly the person that's sitting or the person that is unable to provide for themselves. So I think as, as a country, it has been a lesson. Um, this is my, my, my opinion. It has been a lesson that we need to, to learn from. And also on the last elections, we have seen how the party that's been um, ruling South Africa, how the numbers have dropped mm -hmm. and the parties that came um, out of pe people being unhappy and not being able to express themselves and the number of people that are choosing not to vote mm. that's another way mm. of voicing what you think so i think there's there's quite a lot that we can take <coughs> and there's quite a lot that we as young people can be able to 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 take as lessons and even challenge mm. when no, yeah give us I some examples of these lessons that you think I we think should be the, the whole thing is accountability mm. you know again we uh, we've got our right but the responsibility to hold people accountable. Mm. It's very difficult to do that at a high level. Mm. But when you have got that city councillor or that local councillor, if it's sitting there with a whole bunch and saying, we want answers. And when you start putting pressure, that person, if that's happening at 50 locations, those people are going to their caucuses and saying, the people are speaking. They are going to start listening. Mm. That's why I say it needs to start at, at mm. grassroots mm. level and we need to individually be active citizens and hold people accountable. I mean, I think we saw uh, to a limited extent when the Zuma must fall, I reported on that at the gates of parliament. Mm. People started, none of us ever thought it would happen. Mm. And I don't know mm. if that had a, any impact mm. or people started listening, but we need to start 
number one, becoming more of a, uh, a united South Africa mm. and not being as fragmented. Mm. We do, you mentioned the political parties. When you, they said, oh, so many political parties, 40-something, uh, or I don't know how many it was, but that was a signal that the people were tired. True. Mm. And some of the bigger parties said, don't vote small because X, Y, Z would happen. But you saw the people were dissatisfied. And I think we need to, right from, I mentioned again, the grassroots level, start being active and saying, we are going to hold you accountable. Because we let them go, we let the reins go yeah. as a nation. And uh, through complacency or whatever it might be, mm. we just let the reins go. Now we need to take that back. And this election, I think, is a start of saying, okay, we're voting for these people, we're voting, we've had a splintered vote, that's fine, but people are listening. Yeah. And uh, if a party has lost seats, I think that all lost seats, and smaller parties gained. Mm. And I think they're going to start listening. Well, people have spoken, and we need to keep that, mm. that ball rolling. Absolutely. Uh, Zuki, the, the, the picture that, 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 that Wayne sketches now is that there's obviously our responsibility to be involved at, a, at the level of democracy and mm. politics. <coughs> but at a local level, I know that Unite Behind really works in big campaigns, but at a local level, there are also things that people can do and must do to, 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 be, to take ownership of the responsibility? I would then again speak about um, education because people, are, they, they don't know, they, I don't want to be general, but a lot of people are not aware of the importance of them voting because of losing hope. A lot of people have lost hope. A lot of people have decided, you know what, whatever I do, it's not going to make a difference. I've been s staying in a shack for 20 years. What difference am I going to make if I start um, holding my counsel to, to account? You know? So all those small things, I, I think, which is what you've touched on, that people need to, we need to find a way for people to start having that hope that we are we will be able to to make a difference because people have lost hope mm -hmm. people don't know where to tend to or who to tend to because of the promises because of lack of service delivery because of not having anything mm -hmm. but i would say it's if, if we keep on pushing we keep on educating ourselves and we keep on understanding the importance of because you know the masses we the people that hold the power the minority of people that have been elected to make decisions on our behalf they don't really have the power. We've got the power, it's just that we don't realize the amount of power that we have as the community and as masses and this is the rest of South Africa. Again, the education factor is important. And often we think of education from a macro level, mm. schools, universities, mm. but using social media as an educating process, uh, making those one minute, three minute videos saying, uh, you have a problem with sewage running down your street. This is the telephone number. You have a person talking to people. Because you know, uh, people watch video all the time on their mm. phones. And if you've got things that are talking to the issues you're raising, mm. and, and they've lost hope, but someone comes and made the video and said, but you, you're losing hope here, but you can actually mm. do something. Mm. Go here, go there, or do this, start that initiative. But the, the audio and the video and uh, photographs, we, we, you can show people on social media. And those are the positive sides. So where there's so much negative, the uh, negativity, your keyboard warriors put those videos and say, this is what I'm doing, mm. uh, your organization, mm. this is what we're doing. And when we start flooding the social media with these different positive, aspects, yeah. the positive sides of things, people can, when you, you ask now, can we give examples? When we give examples through social media, this is what's happening. Someone says, well, I could do that. That's not so, so mm. difficult. You know, mm. all these older women in townships who've started daycares or initiatives, you see in the, sh the Checkers mm. ShopRite Awards, it blows your mind. They couldn't care less. They just start something. Next minute, they're a, a, a leader in their community. And we can make that yeah. happen. Yeah. Sure. I just want to, we, we've got about two minutes left. I want very quickly, both of you also, just to give us an idea that what we're dealing with, the frustration around getting people to be active, the, 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 the lack of education around how you can be active, this is not unique to South Africa. This is mm. part of a global trend in people becoming more active, Wayne. I know you spoke about it earlier. Yeah, I mean, mm. uh, one of my partners in the organization mm. we started, uh, he's been looking at San Francisco. They've got bigger problems in Musenberg and what we've got in Cape Town. So we are doing something right, and we are taking it back. Mm. And I think 
getting that initiative going and saying, I'm not really cared. We, we, act, we have something yeah. that is good, we can do, let's do it. Yeah. There's, there are some positives though, Zuki. Um, if we just look at, at, at some of the, the victories that have happened, um, both in your own organization, mm. but generally also. Um, definitely. Um, one organization that is an affiliate of ours again, they have managed to get um, a policy on minimum norms and standards. Mm. It's called equal education. But the problem now is the implementation from the government side. And they haven't really stopped, you know, to put pressure on the government to say, we've had, this comes from the court, to say we need a policy on minimum norms and standards to say, this is what a school should look like. If a school does not look like this in South Africa in 2019, you should not consider that building a school. So that's one of the victories that, that I, can, I can speak about. Yeah. Thank you to both our guests. Wayne Turner from uh, Musenberg. Also, you can find Wayne and his work at hellomusenberg.com to learn more about the Musenberg Community Initiatives. Thank you also to Zuki Vuka from Unite Behind to learn more about Unite Behind and their work. Visit unitebehind.co.za. From me, Halde here at Cape Town TV and the crew. Till next time. Hey.